The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to uh, the October 23rd. Today's a wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes. Thanks so much for being here. Hey, look, this uh, show, this uh, next hour, it's really all about you. I'm here to serve you. So uh, if you'd like, you can give us a call at 877-927-6648. Uh, we'll take a look at any instrument that you want as thoroughly as we can. Of course, if you can't call in, we've got you covered there, too. You can send me an email. Steve at TFN.com. Just put radio show question up in that subject heading, if you would, in the Tiger's Den, any ping will do. Currently, we've got basically flat markets out here. Let's go take a look at those. You've got the Dow up 24 points, flat. The S&P is up four, basically flat. They're up one-tenth, less than two-tenths of a percent to the upside. The NDX, 100 the same. It's up eight points. Russell's up two. The semis are the ones leading the charge dollar-wise. Well, yeah, they're leading the charge uh, to the downside. Percentage-wise, dollar-wise, 19 bucks the downside and transports are off 20 bucks as well but that's just two tenths of a percent out there spot volatility index is down at 1420 it's uh, down by about two percent uh, gold's at uh, seven uh, up at it's trading at 1495 up seven dollars and change silver up seven pennies out here light sweet crude up a buck uh, natural gas up a uh, almost two pennies out there and bonds are up five ticks uh, dollar wise to the upside leading the charge is lithium motors up 17 bucks nearly 14 percent thermo fish is up seventeen dollars or six percent. Teledyne is up five percent, fifteen buckaroonies, and Google's up twelve. Uh, Chipotle is leading the charge to the downside, off nearly five percent, almost forty bucks. CoStar Group down thirty-two, nearly six percent. Service Now is off nine. Amazon's down eight. So there's certainly things to look at. Of course, we want to look at what you want to look at, and we'll do that uh, for our first requester out here, uh, and that is from Robert B. Robert B. writes in, wants to take a look at. Uh, please review the charts for FCG. Let me know if it's bottom. I don't currently have a position over. I'm interested in taking a long position in this ETF. So as you know, with ETFs, we always like to know what's inside them. First, what is FCG? FCG is the first trust natural gas ETF. Now, many of you might think, like I did, that maybe this is just holding the natural gas contracts, just another ETF like UNG out there. But no, not so fast. Instead, what's uh, the holdings with inside of FCG, there's 32 of them, and it's mostly uh, corporations, mostly companies out there. Not everything uh, out there, but like uh, Cabot Oil and Gas Corporation is the number one holding. I bet you didn't know that. I didn't know. It's 5.19% as of last night's close out there. Uh, Vermilion Energy, Murphy Oil Corp, Range Resources, Simerex. So you've got 32 different uh, positions. Uh, the top five represent 5, 10, 15, about 25 maybe a little over 25%. So what you really want to do, Robert, I, I can't do that for you during the show here, is take a look at the holdings inside there, understand what they're doing. Uh, but here, if we take a look, if you ask the question, has it bottom? Well, here's a couple things that we know. Today, it's traded with inside its daily profile. It's a daily profile that formed today. So you do have a new piece of information, Robert. It provides you with support and resistance. Support is 10.05. Resistance is 10.62. The actual high today, 10.65. Where is it trading? 10.58. So you've asked the question, has it bottom? We don't know the answer to that yet. Uh, the second question would be, well, has it broken out? Has it cleared a level of resistance? Well, you now have a level of resistance. The answer right now is no. But a close above 10.62 would go a long way to saying, well, price should then move up to its next area of resistance. From a profile standpoint, that would be 10.93. 10.93 is the bottom of the weekly profile. So if you are to take a long position, we can't see so far this week. It's only Wednesday. It's hump day out here. 
here, but you can't see a bearish engulfing candle thus far. So we'll go see if there's some kind of pattern there on a weekly basis that suggests a bottom. And if so, watch 1093 and then 1199 on the way to the upside. On the monthly time frame chart, no signal of any kind of bottom just yet. No, no reversal signal, no bullish reversal candle of such. So we don't know on the monthly time frame out here. Now, if we go to Stevie's other charts, white background charts, has all my other tools on there. Here, what we can see is we can see uh, not much. We don't have any kind of real bottoming pattern. That doesn't mean it hasn't bottomed. There's a handful of patterns that you and I like to look for. When they're present, they really provide us with the conviction, is this trying to bottom or not? At this stage, those patterns being TD nine counts, uh, wave number seven or G. In this case here, you're in wave number four, letter D. Baz will tell you the market can do something else. Well, the something else may have already been done today by bouncing up and testing resistance. I don't know that out here. We can take a look at uh, the Rhodes momentum indicator bottoms. A to B equals CD patterns. Oftentimes, they'll be accompanied with or create a Gartley or a butterfly pattern out here. There is no A to B equals CD that I see on a daily time frame for us to uh, look at. There's no bullish reversal candle out here. Remember, a green candle doesn't mean it's bullish, just tells you where price opened and closed. The same with a red bodied candle out here. Okay, so the daily not really providing you and I with a whole lot, but I would say there's higher to go if price were to close above the top of that profile. So 1062, write that down on your pad of paper. If we do look at the weekly time frame chart, what we do see though is we do see a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. Price moving lower, doing less relative energy. So you've got a signal out here. Now, now, the last time we saw a bottoming signal on a weekly basis, it both had a TD setup nine count as well as a Rhodes momentum indicator. That was right here the week of June 21st when it created that piercing candle. Now, as we measure candles, we don't know what the weekly candle will be like. Uh, of the, uh, If I take a look at five reversal candles, but in this case here we'll talk about bullish reversal candles and categorize them one through five out here from least bullish to most bullish piercing candle is going to be number two going to be number two. So you always like to see that signal generate some type of bullish reversal message and follow through out there, which in fact this did uh, the week of June 28th. Then you like to see Two weeks once you've taken out resistance, two closes, two bars, I should say, uh, that give you that same message. It didn't really get that same message, so to speak, the week of July 25th out there. So that's what you're looking for. It's telling you it's trying to make a bottom. We don't have something on a daily time frame out here to suggest otherwise, but you do have a bottoming signal. So I'd watch the daily time frame, the 1062. If this has bottom, then uh, what FCG should be able to do, Robert, is get above resistance out there. From a monthly uh, standpoint, Monthly standpoint, let me pull this back this way. Oh, I see why it's giving me that. Um, price is moving lower, doing less, rel less relative energy, but no bullish reversal candle yet. So to answer your question out here, as it bottomed, it may have. Uh, and I'd uh, watch the, uh, I'd go ahead and put the weekly together with the daily to give you the most uh, information out there. Again, 1062 is a close above, then 1093, uh, and then you should be off to the upside, which would be 1199. So, Robert, thanks for writing in. Hope that answers your question. Uh, John writes in, John in Sarasota, he writes in and says, hey, Steve, is the OIH coming off of the bottom? So that is the Oil uh, Service Holders Trust, uh, OIH, VanEck Sectors Oil Service is out here uh, today, uh, uh, John, this is trading above the top of its daily profile. Uh, this would suggest a move into the 1291 area. So we get back from the break, though. Let's go take a look at the OIH. Let's use uh, Stevie's other tools and uh, answer. Well, we already know it's come off of the bottom. The question is, was it a bottom? Was it a real good bottom out there? Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. 
Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, market's still relatively flat out here. We're trying to answer the question for John in Sarasota. Has uh, OIH come out the bottom? So we're going to say the answer to that question is definitely yes. We answered that right away when we saw that yesterday and today now uh, we have two days in a row where price is trading above the top of its daily profile. That's resistance. When you see that, tells you of a pending change in trend out there. The weekly profiles here. Price has made its way up to the uh, center of the box. Uh, inside that price range, which is 1119 to 1291. The center is where both buyers and sellers believe there is fair value. So, John, what you're looking for here as an additional signal of a move higher would be some type of close above 1205, not 1206, but something above 1205. If you get that, then you're looking at 1291 out there. On a daily time frame, do I have what uh, one of Stevie's uh, bottoming signals and patterns out here? We don't. All we really have is a uh, test of a prior swing point out here, the prior swing point from August 15th and was tested on October 9th and the uh, 10th out there. Doesn't mean that price can't move higher. Another upside target if price is able to take out the top of its daily profile would be where OIH broke down and that level is 13. 23. But is it off the bottom? Absolutely. When we take a look at the daily time frame out here, the weekly chart, the weekly chart shows us what? Uh, shows us that there is a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. And uh, this week here is the first bullish reversal candle. Now, the week has not ended. But if this were Friday and uh, we were at the market close, we would say, yeah, the weekly chart has generated a bottom signal for you. Longer term, 
should price really be able to break out the upside? Should this be a really strong, valid bottom? 24.62 is the uh, number that you are looking at. So the daily above resistance, the weekly showing the potential for a bottoming signal. The monthly, uh, we still have time to go. Uh, it could also be forming roads momentum indicator bottom. So in summary, John, looks like price is off the bottom, going to continue higher. You're trading right into your next area of resistance. That's 1205. Above that, 1291 as well as the other figures that we provided to you. So I got a couple other questions that have come in, but why don't we spend a little bit of time here? We didn't really do it much yesterday. Go take a look at the markets, and we'll come back to those questions out here. So we take a look at the markets, trying to get a feel for what they're doing. Let's just do this. Let me do this for you. Um, well, let me try to do it this way. If we take a look at the... Um, the TAS daily profile. So let's just uh, refresh ourselves. Where are we at? So the left-hand panel is the ES mini. Price is right now trading right in the resistance level. That is the uh, top of its daily profile. That's at 30, 30, I'm sorry, that's at uh, 29, 20, I'm sorry, that's at 29.95. I'll get it out. Don't worry about that. I'll get it out. If price closes above that, uh, you could see a run up at least to its descending trend line in the 30.18-ish area, even up to 30.32. So it's bullish. Well, maybe not so fast. We'll come back and we'll take a look at that. If you take a look at the NQ, it's trading in between its profiles out here. The Dow in between its profiles and the Russell 2000 in between its profiles out there. The point here is that we haven't seen any piercing, any levels of support fail. They would each be the bottom of those profile levels out there. So we don't have that. Okay, number one. Number two, what do we have? Well, I don't know. Let's go take a look. Let's take a look at the New York Stock Exchange. If we take a look at the New York Stock Exchange, you got your advanced decline oscillator reading. It's up at 93.04. Oftentimes, when the New York Stock Exchange forms a top, it does it around the plus 150 area. So there could be more room to run to the upside. Price is a tad higher out here. Spot volatility index, the bottom panel is below its 50 day exponential moving average out there, which is priced at 16.08. The uh, spot VIX is currently is trading at. Where is it? Uh, 1432. So um, there's really nothing bearish here, is there? Mm. Okay, well, hold on a minute. You know, earlier I mentioned the S&P or the ES Mini and said, hey, this thing could run higher. If we take a look at the ES Mini out here, what it did yesterday was it uh, generate, well, well, here, first of all, let's take a look at it like this. Um, yesterday was day number eight of a TD setup, potential TD setup nine count. If today's close is above in the ES mini, the number you're looking at is 29.98. Right now you're at 29.97. If there's a close above 29.98, even Stephen out there, then you're going to have a TD setup nine count with bar eight being the um, being the high of that count out there. Of course, it could be bar number 10, so it could be tomorrow. Uh, but we did have yesterday, remember we were talking about the, uh, the piercing candle, the brother from another mother of the piercing candle on the bearish side is a dark cloud cover candle. That's what we had take place yesterday. Remember on the scale, the, the road scale out here, the zero to five or the one to five scale, how the dark cloud or the uh, piercing candle was a level two of five, five being the strongest. Well, the dark cloud covers level two of five with five being the strongest to the bearish side out there. But we did get an A to B equals CD to the upside completion yesterday. We can go measure that. The reason why we say it was a completion was because we got that dark cloud that bearish reversal candle. So price has confirmed a top. And then what took place last night about 8.30, just as the uh, just as the ball game was coming on, uh, we saw the ES Mini trade down to support. Support is 29.84 as we speak right now. What is support? It's Stevie's green line, green red line. Why did I create the Stevie line out there, the oscillator unchanged line? Why did I do that? Maybe I had the same question that you had. Can you help me identify the difference between a retracement and something more than a retracement? This is, and I'm referring, you can retrace to the upside and to the downside out there. What's a tool that you and I can create, we can use, we can help us to answer that question out there? Because like many of you, maybe you don't suffer from this problem. Maybe it was only I that suffered from this problem. I'd be in a position, I'd start to see something pulling back, and I might say, oh, no. 
thinking that things would just go straight up. Of course, you and I know that things don't just go straight up or straight down, or sometimes they do out there, but the majority of the time they don't. And so when they are going straight up and you see a pullback, is that the end? Is that the beginning? Is that a uh, place to just simply buy the dip? So to answer all those questions, I developed this tool out here. It really helps to it really helps uh, provide me with an understanding of what the message of the markets is. And isn't that really what it's all about? So as we speak right now, we have a valid topping pattern. Then I had to go through the whole gyration of what does a valid topping pattern really mean? Do you back up the truck? You could. Or do you do something else? Well, when you do get a topping pattern, the first role, in this case here, of sellers is to go test support. So we've got to be able to identify support. Well, our oscillator and change line is one of those things that we use to identify support. Our TD setup nine count breakouts and breakdowns are other things that we use to identify very clear levels of support inside the ES mini. That was 2875.25. So when price was pulling back a fairly large retracement off of the highs in September, where did it find support? Right there where price broke out. You see, prior to that, prior to developing these two sets of tools out there, I would have been sitting here telling you that support or the breakout would be going back and looking at the swing point. And Stevie says, mm -mm 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 -mm. not so fast. Swing points are beautiful for figuring out Fibonacci retracements. So the ES Mini has done as a topping pattern and sellers tested support. So we're kind of like in neutral land. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed 
designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, still flat markets out here. We're taking a look at the equity markets and, and some of Stevie's tools out here. You know, just like my green slash red line can act as support, it can also act as resistance out here. If you take a look at the gold contract out there, for those of you that are bulls out here, be careful. In fact, be extraordinarily careful. Why? Take a look at where price what price has done here. Remember when that color line, the chameleon out there, or the comedian of that line is the fact that when it changes color, it tells us of an impending test between price and that line. That's what has taken place so far today. As of 1.30 in the afternoon, you have a test and rejection. Now, the color of that line is muy importante. It's red. Tells us the price oscillator is now below zero. And this was the test to determine, is the market really bearish or is it bullish? Well, continued tests and rejections of that line, especially while it's red, is bearish. However, there's another line of support out here. It's called the bottom of its TAS daily profile, 1482.40. If you see a close below that, it will be timber. Look out below out there. But let's go back to the equity markets out here, because what else is it that we know about? So we know we've got a valid topping pattern. Absolutely. Uh, sellers did the right thing. They pushed price down to support, haven't been able to bust it. We're trading in between the top of that resistance level, which now is going to be yesterday's high, that dark cloud cover candle and support. So it's kind of neutral out here. What other piece of information should we be looking for? Well, if we take a look at this chart here, I kind of referred to it yesterday a little bit. I thought it would just go ahead and make both charts uh, closing basis charts. The bottom chart is a spot volatility index. The top chart is the S&P 500. You're going to see a number, and there's maybe a few others we could add here, but you're going to see a number of red diagonal lines. What, you be, what you're focused on is take a look at one line. Just start from the right going left out here. And what you're taking a look at in the S&P in this case here is price moving higher. While at the same time, on a closing basis, the spot volatility index is also moving higher. In other words, higher bottoms and higher highs out here on a closing basis. Now, when you have that same pattern as an example, you can go back and find that right out back here on July 29th in the July 29th timeframe out here. You can see we had that same pattern when we saw the S&P 500 make a nice move to the downside into the early part of August. If we come back out here during the time period in May of 2019 out here, we had the S&P making higher highs at the same time, the spot volatility index making higher lows out here. And so this pattern, and it also works in reverse. What do you mean reverse? Well, take a look at here during the time frame, time frame between May 13th and uh, June 3rd. In the S&P 500, we were seeing lower lows. And if we take a look at the spot volatility index out here, we were seeing lower highs out there. So it's a great tool. So where are we at right now? Where we're at right now, we can't use this as a timing tool, but you can use this as a preparation tool, not a preparation H tool, but a real preparation tool to help you, to help us understand what the markets are communicating to you and I. Now, because the spot volatility index is tied to the S&P 500, you and I, for this tool, we're more focused on the S&P P cash or we're more focused on the ES mini. Of course, you and I prefer to use the ES mini because we have more data to use. We always like to use more data. So yesterday's sell the D point, the 1 to 1.272A to B equals CD is really important to watch. What's the next important thing to watch for the ES mini? Yeah, you know it. We already talked about it. It's called Stevie's red line. It's green right now, and that's 29.84. It'll change by a point or two as price moves up and down out here. But that's really the level you want to be watching out here for the ES mini to give you its next piece of information. So right now it's still bullish, but we have to be 
careful about these other patterns that are present inside the market. Now, look, we have more. We don't have to stop there, and we won't stop there. We won't stop till we have an answer. Now, if we go take a look at the NASDAQ composite as an example, what do we know about the NASDAQ composite out here? Well, we know that... Um, um, yesterday, big old bearish engulfing candle. Okay, that was a completion of an A to B equals CD in the NASDAQ composite. If we take a look at that pattern out here, it looks like this. So we'll just draw that in. It was between a 1 to 1 and a 1 to 1.272 A to B equals CD. What does the NASDAQ composite group of sellers do? Push price down to where? Stevie's green line, 80.78. You see, in this line, it's not a moving average, so you can't replicate it. I watch people try to replicate it all the time. Why would you replicate it when you can actually have the real thing out here? Eh, but in any event, inside the NASDAQ composite, price was pushed down to support. Don't replicate it. You don't need to do the real thing. If we take a look at other instruments that show us potential topping signals out here. So you've got one inside the NASDAQ composite. That yeah, was yesterday. Take a look at the Dow transports on fire. But what was yesterday's high? Yesterday's high was a test of breakdown resistance, 10732. It was also the bar following bar nine of a TD setup nine count. This has a potential topping pattern in place, too. Now, price is not pulled back to test Stevie's green line. If we do see selling in the transports, where do you think the price target is? 10,451 or thereabouts, because that number will change as price moves up or down. But we know we've got a valid topping signal inside the Dow transports. How about the Wilshire 5000? Just trying to take a look at larger um, indices. What was yesterday? Yesterday, well, it was bar number eight of a TD setup nine count. But in order for the Wilshire 5000 to have a valid TD setup nine count pattern, today's close must be above. 3561.64. That is the close from bar number five. Does it need to do that pattern, form that pattern? No, it doesn't. Why? Because what you have here is a valid sell the D point. There, whoops, that was the A to B equals C D to the upside inside the Wilshire 5000. It was confirmed with yesterday's dark cloud cover. So, what's the level that we should be watching if there's a move to the downside for the Wilshire? Very simple. 30,394, Stevie's green line. A close below that says price will pull back further out here. We won't spend time figuring out the further because we're not there just yet. The New York Stock Exchange, which oftentimes you and I take a look, we already did. We took a look at the advanced decline oscillator reading out there. What was yesterday? Yesterday was bar number eight of a TD setup nine count. Does the Wilshire 5000 have a valid sell the D point. In other words, it completed an A to B equals CD pattern. Does it have one? Does anyone see one out here? And the answer would be no. You don't if you're using Stevie's sets of tools out here, which is what's going to confirm the A to B equals CD pattern or the Gartley or the butterfly pattern is a reversal candle. No reversal candle. Now, does a TD setup nine count pattern need a reversal candle? Excellent question. The answer is no, it does not. So today, we can see that price is trading above the close of bar number five. Of course, we know that the high for this count can come on bars eight, nine, or the bar following nine. But at this stage here, we have a, if we see, if price were to close right now in the New York Stock Exchange, it too has a valid topping pattern out there. So too does the S&P 500. We looked at that with regard to the ES Mini. Here you can see it also may form a TD setup nine count pattern. It had the valid bearish engulfing yesterday for the sell the D point. So we're starting to get some uniformity. The uniformity is this. It's as simple as this. The markets want a top. There are all kinds of topping signals out here. Remember, nothing more bullish and failed bearish patterns out there. So that will be helpful. But has it topped enough to go short the market? No confirmations, no breaks of key levels of support. That's called Stevie's green line, which is sometimes red, but it's the same line. We'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. 
The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in a Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, folks. Let's go to a couple of uh, a couple of uh, requesters out here, email requesters. You, too, can get in on that game, Steve, at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, we'd love to hear your voice at 877-927-6648. But Max uh, is a uh, holder of ticker symbol SKT. SKT is Tanger Factory Outlook outlet centers out there i'm going to guess they're in the retail business the outlet business real estate business really not the and uh, anyways can you tell me a uh, target to sell i think the price gets me into the 19 dollar area so here's what we know about the uh, tanger factory outlets skt price is well above the daily profile out there so Looks like breakout mode. It's above the weekly as we speak right now. The top of that box is 1681, and it's below the monthly. So this target level to the upside, if this is a bottom, would be 2055 old support, which may become new resistance. But I know that Max wants more than that. But that's where we're at with regard to your profiles. Now, when we take a look at the daily time frame chart out here. There's a couple of things. One, we don't have a valid bottoming, bottoming pattern per se. If we look at this ticker symbol, look at how it made its most recent high, the most recent I'm referring to is September 12th. You take a look at the TD setup nine count pattern. It was bar number eight that made those highs out there. And then price proceeded to move lower as sellers were supposed to do, push price back to where this equity broke out. Well, where it broke out was 1392. Did it get back to 1392? No, it did not. It got down to a low of 1416. You got to like that. That was about 24 cents away. Okay, maybe that's not good enough for you. But what Max is concerned with, or should be concerned with, is, hey, last time this top with a TD set up nine count, will it do the same now? I don't know. Yesterday was bar number eight. That means today is bar number nine. 
Max, what you should be doing is you should be tightening your stops. I know you're looking for an exit to the upside, and I'm going to try to give you those. But what you should also be doing is you should be tightening your stops on ticker symbol SKT, because today's high could be that top or it could be tomorrow. Or you just may see this continue to move forward because we did see a breakout here above resistance of 1585. Uh, but that really is kind of like old resistance. We already saw a break of that level out here. So ideally, I would have stopped that line and not used that for this move out here. We can see that Stevie's red line turned green four bars ago. What do we know is the phenomena associated with that? We see a revisit of Stevie's green line, which is at 1622. That doesn't mean it pulls back to 1622. The line can be moving higher. Price can be moving lower. All types of combinations out there. But the answer to your question with regard to where are the target levels, well, on the daily basis, the next target to the upside would be 2033. I am not saying this is going to get to 2033. What I am saying is be careful. You see, the prior high before the one that we just took a look at, that too formed with the TD setup nine count. It was the bar following nine that identified the high. That was July 17th out there. I'm not saying that the third time is the charm. I don't know if it's a charm. I don't yet have a crystal ball. I ordered it from Amazon. They haven't delivered. I wonder why. But what we do have, and you and I don't need a crystal ball, we just need to know that these patterns are the way the market communicates to us when it gets exhausted. When it gets exhausted to the upside or to the downside, uh, when these patterns are present, we really pay attention. I want you to pay attention, regardless of what your upside target might be. Just simply adjust your stop. Use something. You can use the average true range, which on this uh, equity out here on a daily basis is 52 cents. Use some multiplier of 52 cents because you don't want average results out here. In fact, you don't get average results when you do something average in life, do you? If you're an employer and somebody's doing an average job, what do you think of that job? Uh, not much. OK, we want extraordinary results out here. We don't want average. Well, so what you want to do is make sure your stop is somewhere outside of 52 cents below where it's trading right now. I suggest you multiply times 1.272 or 1.618. Just Fibonacci numbers out there. That's what I would do. Prices, look, it's above the weekly profile out here, 1681. So that's a positive out here. Maybe the retracement is just pulling back to Stevie's uh, green line when it does do that. And that could be your test and rejection for further upside move where you would want to add to your position perhaps out here if I look at the weekly chart for some type of valid bottoming pattern or signal out there I don't have it I've got wave number six that's letter F nice hammer candle out there price could be targeting 2066 that would be another level to be looking at so there's uh, your review of Tanger factory outlet that was for max a million out there and best of luck with that trade LB writes in and LB wants to take a look at ACB I believe that is Aurora cannabis the Aurora Borealis. And uh, I took a position yesterday wondering if you could take a look at it, see if you agree that they have bottomed. So if we take a look at Aurora Cannabis, ACB out here, what do we know? We know there's a daily profile. This formed about a week ago or so, bottom of which is 33.52. That level is held. Doesn't tell us the bottom, just tells us the support is held. So you've got support out there. Monthly chart has pulled back to the uh, center, the top of its box. I take that back. That's 374. You're trading slightly below it. 367. We're not going to worry about those few pennies out there. I'm not going to worry about it. But you asked the question, has it bottomed? When we take a look at Stevie's other tools out here, what we know is price was pushing lower, doing less relative energy. Today, you've got a bullish engulfing candle. Uh, back on the 16th, you had a bull sash to confirm this candle. So it's really trying to form a bottom. But what is missing from this LB is a break of resistance. And in this case here, that's you're not going to know until you see this close above, if it can close above, $4.14. That's the top of its daily profile out there. If I look to the weekly time frame chart here, looking for some type of bottom, we don't have it. Uh, last week was week seven. This week may be week eight of a TD setup nine count. We need the full nine. The last time we saw a nice bottom out here with that count was back on December the 28th out there. The prior week was nine. That following low, as we know, the low can occur on bars, the bar following nine. That's what took place. And price ran right up to where? Resistance, $10.30. I do not make this stuff up.
these lines really work that well to help us understand what the market is communicating. Remember, when you can close above resistance out there, it tells you of a, a change in trend uh, type of signal out here. And on the monthly time frame chart, we don't have a lot of data, but actually this suggests to us, Lee, and you want to just use a stop, that you and I would not be surprised if ACB, the Aurora Borealis out there, pulled all the way back to a buck 60, and that might be your buy out there. So yeah, you've got it trying to form a bottom. It hasn't proven itself to you. I'm not saying to exit the trade. I'm saying make sure you have a stop below 352. Average true range on this is 27 pennies out there. So LB, thanks so much for writing in. I hope that that helps you out. Looks like we have a question inside the den. Peter, what are your settings on the VIX 50 Bollinger Bands? I'm doing something wrong, 50 and one. You may be doing 50 and 2 out there. What is uh, Peter referring to out here? If we take a look at um, this, Peter, it should look something like this for your Bollinger Band settings. We'll put this one up here. And you can see kind of like the little black line. Uh, 1436 should be basically the bottom if you use one standard deviation, 50 and 1 for Stevie's Bollinger Band readings. It's the only place I use it on the spot volatility index. We'll be right back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated Traded fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Welcome, welcome back. 
folks. Uh, more interested, more interest in pot stocks out here. Canopy growth is the next one we're going to take a look at. And the answer, I forgot to answer the question yesterday. Jonathan Edwards, what was the question? Alex Trebek out there, right? It was who sang that song, Shanty, out there. Uh, we take a look at pot stocks. just reminds me of that song. I have not heard it for a long time, but it's a goodie, but an oldie. And the question is, uh, what about uh, what about canopy growth out here? So canopy growth does have a valid bottoming pattern. Here's what we know about it right now. No new profiles on the daily basis. Uh, so prices trading below the bottom, prices below of the daily, of the weekly, of the monthly out there. But we know that the profile levels help us to identify support and resistance. Resistance. We can't really use them. We can use them to help us understand if levels of support or resistance have failed in our effort to be able to find change in trend signals, but they're not going to be used to call the bottom. They can't be used for buying the dip of a prior bottoming pattern out there, okay, because there are levels of support. But let's get to it, Steve-O. If you take a look at canopy growth out here, we know that price was moving lower, doing less relative energy, and, on, and that was in October 15th. And the following day, October 16th, what we saw was a bullish reversal candle, referred to as a bull sash out there. By the way, I would ask you this question, a bull sash and a bear sash, do you have to have an established trend like you do for a bullish or bearish engulfing candle? Hmm something to think about. If we do take a look at it then on the following day, or not the following day, but the day after, October 18th, you saw a price close above Stevie's red line, a resistance level that failed. Today is bar number five, Mike, of a potential TD setup nine count out here. So be watching this over the next several days out here. But you do have a valid bottoming pattern. That would suggest price would get up to 26.53 to 28.89. So a nice bottoming pattern. Your preference is actually to see things pull back and get rid of that TD setup nine count pattern that's out there. But we can't control what the markets are going to do. The weekly chart shows that price is moving lower due with less relative energy. No bullish reversal signal. It says watch 2398. That could be where you would see price become deflected. So folks, the answer was or is no. Bull sash and a bear sash, there needs to be no established trend. A bullish and a bearish golfing Absolutely. Hey, stay tuned. Thanks so much for being here. Your favorite polar bear, David White's up next. Tom O'Brien will take it home from 3 to 4. And Stevie San will be back with you tomorrow at 1 p.m. Take care.